G this time around gonna leave open the Viego. They didn't in game one, this time taking away the grave. So you would expect the Gwen priority to still be there for EDG, just not wanting to deal with that matchup that they had to go for uh in the first game. Shaoshan goes with Shao. Uh, we then have Viper going for the Felios as well. So very, very standard stuff coming out from both sides so far. Kind of going back to completely standard meta with things like the Zeri taken off the board now. But this Gwen left open. This has been Wayward's go-to pick comfortably. 50% win rate, but four games played is the key thing. This is his most played champion and has had some amazing team fights on the pick as well. And you got to expect that EDG have an answer if they lock it in right, because EDG banned the Graves, and they didn't take the Gwen on first rotation. So in my mind, they're hinting at like, hey, we're fine with you taking this. We have an answer. We got some of the, again, the typical counters we, we usually see in the LPL of the, the Kennen and Jax, obviously being the ones that come to mind, Gray, uh, the Jace as well. But now TS, maybe going to bring a different flavor onto the Rift, going with two meta power picks so far. And Tian looking super excited, but... There we go. We, we talked about it last game, right? This was the champion that he was defined by last year. Almost all of his wins were on the Viego with FPX. He pretty much picked it every chance it was available. Uh, was banned against him a lot in the first series he was in before he did get subbed out for Xiaopeng. And with their backs against the wall, top esports are going to default to more comfort. Certainly are. But this split, I will say, Tien, 0% win rate on the Viego so far. But that said, he's only played it once, so <laughs> I'm exaggerating slightly. It's going to be a Thresh locked in here for Mako on the bottom side. So a bit of peel, but also the ability to engage, the ability to try and outplay in the 2v2. We'll see how that's going to go as the Nautilus band away. Very standard. Not only a great pick for Mark, but also great into the Thresh. Yeah, other things that obviously come to mind for the side of TS that they always look for or EDG could ban is obviously the Thresh. I mean, the Tom Kench, I'm sorry, because we've seen the Tom Kench prio in the LPL rise incredibly high, but sadly that one is taken away by EDG. Obviously the last pick that jumps to mind that you expect Top Esports to want to go into the support role will probably just end up being the Leona for Mark. Now for the side of TS, they already banned away the Jace. The Kennen was the other pick we highlighted for that top lane. Wonder if EDG will have other answers or for the side of Top, if there's any other like annoying mid laners they would rather uh, get away from and no. Team's not really caring about the Kennen matchup these days. Seems like not wanting to deal with the Akali. It's just 369. 369 is the Kennen guy. Everyone else kind of just ignoring it for the minute. <laughs> and interestingly hovering. Oh, just locking Ooh. a Fiora up against Gwen here for Shaoshang. That is a confident lock in. Yeah, I'm really curious. Again, this is not a matchup we see picked every day. I feel like Gwen should have decent tools to be able to deal with this between all of her sustain and even the mobility coming in, right? But hey, if there's a champion who is fine getting into your W and looking for that 1v1, Fiora loves those tools now for the side of TS. Going back towards the aggression, bringing out the Vex, which Knight did have a phenomenal, on, phenomenal game on in game one. And I'm surprised going towards the Rakan. Again, whenever I think of Rakan, I think of Rakan. Like, sure, you can act as the primary engaged champion, but you are not very tanky yourself, right? So if you jump in and you get locked down, you are just blown up. So Rakan typically does have something paired alongside him to be able to jump into the back line. With I guess he does have Knight on the Vex, but will take pretty good coordination coming out from the side of TS to make this one work. Scout needs to lock his pick in, and it will be a Zoe. The crown is strapped out. Not something I was necessarily expecting to be picked today. I feel like it's a fringe pick in the LPL right now. Occasionally, we'll see it locked in, but certainly will give a little bit of range, a good objective play available to EDG if they are in control of the game. But as always, you have to reiterate, Zoe, if you start to fall behind, can feel pretty useless. So Scout, I feel has to find himself some advantages early on to be able to snowball this one. But whether or not that's going to happen, I don't know, because top esports, like you said, very aggressive composition. I also just got to say, Scout, phenomenal Zoe player, but whenever I see Zoe, I'll always just think of our fallen brother who's not in the LPL anymore. Molt, you are greatly missed, but I'm happy that we're still seeing aggressive oh, okay. champions come out, right? I thought we Wait, were talking about Teachable. I thought you'd uh, no. transitioned away from Zoe at this point. We were just talking about the greatest mid laner to ever grace the LPL in, in Teachable. 
What a you know, the next time the next time a soul get, or Nocturne mid gets brought into a game, we could highlight him. But I like that we didn't see the teams default to the victors, the Corky Zorianas in game three. Like we were kind of speculating they would falling behind. We got a lot of flavor coming out on both sides. Again, the, the side laning ability coming out from EDG, especially if this game goes on longer. For top esports, they don't have too much engagement, but still have some tools to start the fights that they need to find. So I expect a lot of early action coming out from both sides, especially around these mid juggles. So how does that happen is my question, Lyric. What are we expecting? Because you're saying we want early action. We're saying it's mid jungle, but is that just like straight up fighting 2v2 in the lane or is that moving to the sides and trying to influence the side lanes? I think for the side of EDG, uh, you can send Zin Zhao to look for these mid ganks. I think Zoe uh, Zin Zhao offering more in the early 2v2 than Vex and Viego do. And then probably pivoting up and, and putting some resources into your Fiora, right? Uh, I assume... In this matchup, especially with Wayward, of course, taking the aggressive summoners, right? If he gets ahead, can just become an absolute monster. For TS, might need to wait a little bit longer to get online. Again, Viego hit that level 6 mark, have access to that ultimate, and to uh, just easier opportunities to be able to find those resets. So, I think EDG will be the ones on the front foot in the early game in terms of mid-jungle. For TS, maybe having a bit more proactivity in terms of their bot lane matchup. So, different things to come out from different sides. See what the calls are going to be as EDG go for an early invade. No, they don't. I thought that there was going to be a war drop. There it is. Ward onto the chickens. Comes out very late from Scout, but will have vision of Tien as he starts his jungle off. But we'll be able to go for a sweeper. So, Tien uh, denying some information, but realistically, they're going to know he's starting on that bottom side regardless. So, Scout playing with information where Tien is. And that should be able to help him in this early learning phase. Great trading straight off the bat from Scout here. Yeah, and this... I mean, this matchup, right? It's pretty much all in champion versus what is essentially a control mage, right? So, Scout has the range advantage to play with with these paddle stars. Uh, you know, barring if Knight can hit any of his Qs, but that is a very easy spell to dodge. Once Knight gets access to that ultimate, though, Scout will be very vulnerable. Did opt into the Unsealed Spellbook to have more utility throughout the game and in team fights. In this bottom side. But I'm keeping my eyes on these junglers because Tien going for that full clear here, starting off with the Krugs. But JJ has not done the same thing. He went to forego his Krugs. He's already on the bottom side of the map. That indicates to me he might be looking for a little bit of action in the city. Yeah, we, we know, right? EDG just love playing around their bot side so much. TES do have a ward in River right now, but by the time that JJ just get through his camps, that one should have timed out. Looked like TS Botling does have the push as well, so potentially could set up a pretty nice gank for the side of EDG. They actually even just pinged out the ward in bot, so full aware of the information that top esports do have. Or I guess don't yeah. have yet. We'll see. We'll have to see his uh, Mark Grand Entrance. Using it as a grand exit there. Dodges away from the death sentence from Mako, though, crucially. JJ starting to path back upwards now. Back towards his wolves. Scuttle Crab's coming up on the map, and Tien slowly but surely finishing that first player as he's up on the top side of the map. It does feel like we're having a bit of a quiet one to kick us off. No early shenanigans, no early invades coming out from either jungler, just playing it safe and trying to figure this one out. But Knight moves down for a bit of vision in the river, and it's just as JJ goes for the crab. So top esports know where JJ is. Yeah, and like you said, no early shenanigans. I mean, Top Esports bot lane did start to respect once the aggression came out from EDG's bot lane, so no obvious gank opportunities. And Gwen does get pressure in this early top lane matchup, even opting into the Lethal Tempo over the Conquer, which is what we typically do see. Lethal Tempo does give you more uh, aggressive options in terms of lane, especially once you do get that stacked up and get bonus range coming out. So Wayward has been able to keep control so far, and yeah, both junglers just going for the standard clears. Yeah, stock and standard so far in this game, but a nice little knock up onto Viper there. Mark able to dash away once again, but just aggressive trading. And I love seeing Mark on something like the Rakan, right? We keep on talking about how aggressive he is. Rakan, one of these champions that allows you so much freedom to not just be aggressive, but be quite creative in the way that you play. The way that Rakan's kit works, like it feels like there are lots of different ways to approach the same. I mean, even in terms of just, like, even other nuances of the game, right? Uh, Rakan being one of the only champions who can sort of 
blindly walk into the enemy jungle and get his vision down because he could, you know, safely W over a wall and get away. Uh, looking for flanks and team fights is very, I'd say, more unique to him than certain other champions who obviously are playing a tank role, so they're typically playing frontline and playing front to back. So very cool to see as we come back to top, get a bit of heavy trading coming out here as well. Obviously, Wayward pushed in the wave, so he does get the bounce back under his turret now. And even though we haven't had any action yet, Munch, five minutes and three more it will be Rift Herald time. And that's where we know both teams are definitely going to go. No one's going to look oh, to trade for plates and maybe denying enemy minion waves. That's tell not me how about it, here. Lyric. Tell me about it. Whisper sweet nothings in my ear. We're going to get a 5v5. We're going to get just, just pure banger. You know, I'm going to double down and say yes. Yes, we are is... You know, Knight, Knights kept pressure in mid, so I think TS have some avenues to be able to look for some of these plays uh, now, especially with Knight hitting that level 6 mark, right? Shaoshang play extremely aggressively as well, so could set up some easy avenues. But if you look at the topside river, EDG do have a ward there to try and spot out any roams coming out from Knight. Yeah, Knight will drop a control ward. Play that vision away. But Herald... That's going to be a conversation for later on because the Drake is a part of the map. JJ, in true EDG fashion, he has priority in that bottom side. He has priority in the mid lane. He can just start this one off. He's on vision. There's full information here for top esports. JJ knows there's no universe where they can contest right now. So we'll be able to get that first Drake of the game for himself. Very nice done. Oh, good little hook from Mako. As Mark tries to answer it, knock up towards Viper, but just goes ever so slightly shallow on that one, and it will be the first play of this bottom lane going the way of EDG. Yeah, so right now, a bit of trading sides coming through. Looks like JJ is going to path back up towards that top side. But Kian should be long gone by that point. Potentially look for a gank on top after you do finish off these Krugs, right? With the fact that Wayward is holding this wave up here. Even looking at the minimap, Knight is hovering over. Yeah, this could be the first big play of the game, Tien over in Trigrush right now, but JJ is nearby as well. This could get precarious for the side of top esports as Wayward. Chaosheng, aggressive trading continues as always with JJ. Spotted them, Knight moves over as well, gets the fear with the personal space. Now stun on Chaosheng, forced to flash. Scout's bubble goes a little wide on this one. Means top esports though, with no flash on the enemy top laner can move in and claim this red book. Yeah, EDG quickly back off. Like you said, the personal space and the, the Doom coming in from Knight being so clutch. Assuming I'm remembering Doom being the fear correctly. Uh, EDG, though, still playing aggressively towards the bottom side. Ooh, big knockup. Mako basically just gets one shot at the bottom side, flashes out. I'm not sure if the Ignite is enough, and Viper can't finish off the counter kills here. Jack oh, yes, he <laughs> can win right. Vigil! Viper just waltzes forward and bodies top esports. Yeah, with the fact that their wave is pushing in, right? Killing minions, able to hit the level 6 mark. The Moonlight Vigil comes out, flashes in, finishes off the kill. And this is the EVG bot lane that we were expecting to see in game 1, where, right, frankly, they got caught out, they got bodied. But this time around, finding the 2v2 kill themselves. Hook comes out, but instantly with the knockup, again, huge damage coming through. Doesn't get locked down. But then right here, about to hit the level 6 mark, one minion dies. Has the confidence, hits the Moonlight Vigil, flashes forward to finish it off with the auto. It is a beautiful coming out from Viper. Viper's just a beast. He's just a monster. And look at his gold league now, 800 in his favor as well. EDG, feeling pretty strong on this one. I actually can't count that 700. No much. They're not contesting because of the 2v2 kill. Top Esports confidence is in the bin and they're keeping Jackie Levant. Oh, I thought Bin was on RNG these days. Either way, it will be a Herald for EDG. And no contestion, as you say, from the side of top esports. But Jackie Love, at least, will get some solo time on that bot lane tower. Shaoshang, the one to go down and answer that as he swapped to the other side of the map. But it will be two tower plates solo for Jackie Love. So realistically, this actually puts pressure on EDG to use this Herald effectively and make sure that that gold trade is worth it. I mean, ultimately, right, I think TS did make the right choice overall. I mean, EDG having the pressure from bot, getting on objective first, Zoe especially uh, being so insane in these early river skirmishes just from the amount of summoners you have access to once people start blowing those. So huge gold swing for Jackie Love with this one. But, I mean, EDG are going to have free time with this turret. They should be able to guarantee that this one goes down. Look at the minimap. Mark and Tian are on their way over. 
Yeah, Top Esports don't want to let this one go down without a fight. Two plates down right now. Wayward moves in. Next wave about to arrive here. But enough of a threat for EDG to back away. So just the two plates shared between three people as well. Comparatively to the... I can't remember if it was three or four plates that Jackie Love got down on that bottom side entirely solo. So when you look at the AD carries, gold still slightly in favor of Viper, but that's definitely going to help Jackie Love close the gap. Yeah, and now you know their bot lane's going to pivot back down towards the bottom side because Dragon coming up in one minute. EDG securing themselves first Dragon. Would be nice if they could start getting uh, towards Soul and Soul Point very early on, especially with the fact that, uh, again, Cloud is the second Dragon. And we know the LPL teams and just pretty much most teams, right? You want, you, even if it is undervalued, right? They all just care about combat power and, again, things like damage and tankiness. So they're going to feel very good fighting over that Souls EDG. Get complete control over the bottom side river. Wayward loves that mode. Like, every time the camera goes over Wayward, it's a crying Amumu above his head. Every single time. He is playing the mental game against Shasha series he has been spamming it at shaoshan all through these laning phases tensi has leading that top side and as to be said wayward has been getting the better of that matchup in terms of actual laning itself but it said it's not going to lead to too much so far this game but he is on that game. there's always the potential for the late game craziness and lyric i'm afraid to tell you that uh we were correct on our assumptions that we have a crazy game one and game two. And in the LPL, that almost always means, okay, game number three, we got to take this serious now. got to play sensible and not just do crazy risky plays all the time. So now both teams playing it relatively slow. As the Drake comes up and it will be a Cloud Drake, which does mean that the Soul will be a little bit more valuable. Even gold though I mean, right now is EDG start this off. I even remember from my coaching days, that's what you do, Munch. It goes to the third game and you're you're both you're all super serious. It's okay, doesn't look like anything can happen. You get super serious, you're like, okay, we can't make mistakes. We gotta win this series. And yeah, that's when it all starts to slow down is Ooh, we might get a bit of a skirmish here though. Might do the bubble. Oh, great play from Scout there, but it doesn't matter because you're playing against Diego. Just jump straight over the wall as Mark Quickness looking for the engage. Oh, oh JJ, that was gorgeous. And now the rest of the team jumping in as well. Mark burning down, but he will go down eventually as in goes JJ. Low HP. Knight gets one for himself. Viper, so many chat crumbs. A rocket in from Jackie Love as well. Knight and Jackie Love versus the world. In goes Knight. Jackie Love low on HP. But the Shadow Surge is there. Knight with a triple kill. Knight versus Scout. The 1v1. Red Smite to reduce the damage. Shadow Surge goes wide. And Scout wins it out. Man, being able to pick up those summoners is so ridiculous. Knight almost able to make it happen, but Scout pulls through in the end. Super close for both sides. Again, just like the small mechanical execution going either way. I also want to highlight, that's why I highlighted typically like Rakan as your main engager can be quite dangerous because you are very squishy. Beautiful ult by Jedges we're going to see to start it off, but you were hitting on Scout forcing Tien to use that ult right away. Mark sees an opportunity, he goes for it, but bam, beautiful ultimate coming out from JJ. Is still able to lock down some members of the side of EDG, and I love that Knight immediately follows in. Him and Tien being so decisive in this play. Jackie Love able to free hit on the opposite side. You get the resets coming through for Scout. Uh, sets up easily for him to be able to follow through. And then this is where it gets a bit depressing, right? Scout misses the bubble. Knight is able to hit the damage, but then with the flash and the red smite coming out, I mean, Scout's able to secure the solo kill. I guess not really yeah. a solo kill because it was a team fight, but... Well, Herald down at the bottom lane now as they look for a tier two as well. Big damage out from Viper. Calibre can go slightly wide, but that'll be a tier two taken. And suddenly, what was a dead even game off the back of this dragon fight now, EDG with a huge amount of pressure. 3,000 gold lead. A scout protects the red buff on the top side, stopping any counterplay from top esports. You can't play both sides of the map when scout is so terrifying. Yeah, they're going to try and answer in mid, but they really don't have anything to be able to take this turret. They might be able to collapse, though. Down towards his bottom side. Viper trying to escape. Mako does have that dark passage available to help Viper escape. Looks like EDG will walk away with their lives. Top Esports wanted to make it happen. That Drake, by the way, still up. Nobody even got that one. We're 15 minutes in as the second Drake still not even taken down. So I'm not sure Soul is going to be a big thing in this game. And if it is, it's going to be a long old way away.
I also want to highlight one thing with that last play. You hit on Scout covering for topside. It's also so massive for the fact that since TS couldn't find the play, they feel like the only course of action is to try and answer on bot side, which also just allowed Shaosheng to push in another wave and, uh, you know, deny some farm from Wayward, get a bit of a reset himself. So overall, helping out both sides of the map, uh, just finding a nice gold swing. 2k gold so far uh, is the advantage for the side of EDG. And heck, look at the Mythics coming out across the board squarely in favor of EDG sitting at 4 compared to 2 for top esports. Oh, now 3. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, as the resets come through, we'll see more. But crucially, Wayward not finishing his off just yet. Jet, jet. Knows he has the advantage. Knows that they've got the gold lead. And knows he can just start this Drake off test of five there just to help him off help him finish it off sorry as that will be the third uh, i didn't even get to see what the soul was okay it's a mountain soul it says it on the end <laughs> so will be a mountain soul this game tn answering on the top side with a herald and an engage in the mid lane as well mako just found out just caught in the mid lane and taken out immediately viper wants to answer this knight takes a bit of damage shadow surge dodged away with the gale force yeah, I can tell Mark was the one to start that one off. Quakeness is down where pretty much everything else is open. I guess it could have been Knight, because Knight's ult is also on cooldown. You just want to try and get the stow. Gonna go for a 50-50. JJ knocked on up, but he's quite deep on this one. Went in pretty much alone there. It means top esports get the Herald and a bonus kill as well. The rest of EDG kind of looking on with surprised faces like, JJ, uh, what are you doing, friend? Yeah, especially right when Shaosheng was nowhere close. Scout is on Zoe, so not really being able to run in arm's reach of the top esports composition. And still, though, nice collapse by TS to be like, hey, this guy's kind of just running it. Uh, you know, did pop the ultimate, so we all do have to get close to be able to deal that damage. And we're going to get a replay of what happened in the mid lane. Knight waiting off to the edge. W and the quickness comes out. Chain it with the Shadow Surge. This is a really nice pick for the side of TS. That's more how I think of their composition, right? For the fact that, okay, you do have pseudo frontliners in the Gwen and Viego, but for the fact that they do have, like, uh, a squishier composition with, like, uh, this kind of lockdown and burst damage, it's like, okay, setting up these kinds of picks, that's your avenue to finding ways in the game and skirmishes that you're able to win. And there's so much follow-up, right? When when Mark does find a way in like that, you've got the rocket coming out from Jackie Love. Knight can just fly into the play. Tien will be able to, if he has flash and ultimate available, he can fly into the play from a long distance as well. It does feel like this is a, a really great composition to be playing Rakan with because you can find these setups and find these picks. So it's exciting to see Knight playing this Vex as well, though, because Vex one of these champions. We said it before that hasn't seen that much play in the LPL. It's been on the edge of the meta, and I feel like it's still sort of finding her place within these teams but some players do like to lean towards it and it feels like knight becoming one of those players you know what's crazy though she is like uh let me see here she's the sixth most played mid laner in the lpl that just shows how much Wait, really? we see it's because of how much we see corky rise in victor oh true. yeah six most played at 23 games compared to corky who's at 83 so yeah yeah that's how the war of the game Kind of insane. I mean, 20 games at this point, that is a fringe pick, right? That ultimately is just a fringe pick. It's going to be a tier one taken down oh, in the mid lane here. As uh, Remember, the two towers were taken earlier on in that bottom side from EDG. So they have a lot of ways to play around Wayward, who is way too far forward on this bottom to lane. TP. He knows it. Might have to TP. Or he might just try and go for a recall. It was spotted on the ward, though. I don't think he gets away with this one. And now he's been... Unable to make up his mind, maybe he finishes a tower at very least. Going for a 1v1 now, sticking his back to the wall so that the vitals can't be procced. And a TP coming out from Knight to save the top laner. And somehow top esports, they actually get a tower off of this play. They're charging a Herald in the mid lane as well. How is this ending up as a positive play? Man, just the fact that, that the second they realized that they were rotating down towards bot, Tisha like, quickly, we need to push out mid, we need to drop this Rift Herald. That now opens the fact that EDG have to be conscious of not only the TP that Knight was channeling, but the fact that the other members can very quickly follow up and rotate down towards that bottom side, and it's enough to dissuade. Once I saw the TP being channeled, I thought that might just be both members of TS going down, but EDG showing them a lot of respect. Yeah, and in the meantime as well, I think understanding that if they don't just respect this and go back towards the mid lane. Jackie Love will take the tier two in the mid lane as well. So kind of pressure on both sides from top esports, even if the bottom lane pressure 
wasn't really intentional to start with. It became intentional. Top Esports kind of getting away with murder a little bit. Five to five on the scoreboard, though, as we broach the 20 minute mark. 45 seconds on this Drake Lyric. Let's set some expectations because EDG are the ones in position right now. Yeah, EDG definitely going to be using Zoe and again, your ability to find picks over terrain to try to set up some of these members of ES. Uh, top Esports need to be the team that pulled the trigger since EDG are on objective first. They need to find the engage, right? So they're going to be looking at both Mark and Knight to be able to get onto that back line. Mark already threatening the idea of going in. Quickness available. So Mark, if he can find a few people grouped up, be able to do some serious work. There's the quickness. Going to jump on forwards. That's going to be a knock up onto the back line. The follow up coming through, but isn't there. Mark just gets destroyed. The rest of the team doesn't go into the fray. Knight using that ult. I'm not sure if he just missed. I mean, for the side of TS, right? He got blown up way too quick. I feel like there's really no great way of following up. And once again, JJ's ultimates at, at shutting down the quickness have just been on point. They haven't yeah. allowed Mark the ease of access onto all the members. They pick up third Drake. They are now on soul point at 20 minutes. And I mean, for TS, they can try and find gold trades elsewhere. They're still not at least behind in terms of gold or, you know, stats with items, right? So they'll still find to be able to take these fights, but heck, one misstep, EDG get that soul. Everything becomes a lot harder. Certainly does an amount of salt as well, reducing the burst damage that can come out from this team that we've already talked about. They kind of need to burst someone right at the start of the fight. Mount Soul certainly won't help Top Esports in that regard, but keep your eyes on JJ here. Once again, just knocking Mark away to try and deny this engage. Mako as well, right? Throws the play just in case, drops the box. Like they're doing everything to make sure that that he doesn't get that multi-man engage and they are just able to, I mean, burst him out, right? We, we've already hit on the recon point a few times, but this is why I was very skeptical of it. Why well, I expected them to just go towards uh, something like Leona in draft, but still, right, they will have a Jinx. They have the Viego, they have the Gwen, they have champions who in the late game, I mean, Jinx gets one, one kill, you know, she gets excited, Viego, Tien can take advantage of that, get a reset. You, you can take over. It just takes one misstep from the side of EDG or, heck, even the quickness just landing on, on one target who isn't completely with the team. Oh, Wayward will not be able to get this recall off. Can they somehow miraculously make this positive again? I don't think so. Scout to grab the kill onto Wayward on the bottom side. Uh, in the meantime, top esports. They get, get a red buff. Uh, and that's going to be I, it. Yeah. I, I was kind of scared that EDG might be presented with an opportunity to push in on this tier 2 mid. But not going to have confidence thinking, hey... Uh, they could already be rotating back over because if you see EDG don't have any vision in that topside jungle, I'm sure Top Esports had just cleared before we panned over back to topside. So nice by EDG. They find the pick on bot. They pay respect up towards top. They lose a red buff. But in the end, uh, I think you're happy getting a kill, denying a wave, and also taking away their beloved chickens. Feels good, though, to see EDG playing this like slower style again. Not that I don't love watching crazier games. I really do. Those are my favorite games, but it does feel good to see EDG calming things down a little bit and having control like this, because this is when EDG look their best, right? When they are in control of the game and can just set up these nice, normal team fights later on into the game. They can scale into things. They can use their side lanes effectively. That's when EDG look the best. And so in this game, doing a really good job. But Top Esports still threatening them, still even in gold right now. That's the crazy thing. 23 minutes in, the biggest difference is those drakes. And that next one spawning in two minutes will be bad news for Top Esports. Shout shot. Just about getting it. Yeah. And we uh, also want to highlight kind of some of the items we're seeing out right. Surprise. Wayward just committing straight towards the Morello, even though there's no fight breaking out. Just now just sitting on Oblivion Orb, maybe making his way towards the Quinter Zanyas with, you know, having to deal with Shaoxiang and pr pretty much all of you just comp right being AD other than the Zoe. So uh, is going to have a bit more power in terms of stats if a fight did break out right now but we also look at the top side of the map and scout is getting free time with an inner turret yeah he's just chilling he's just off on the side and zoe's actually surprisingly good at destroying the towers not that great at side landing generally speaking because you're so immobile but using that passive you can take through towers pretty damn quickly so scout happy with that one just gets the solo local gold as well on that one so very nice stuff from EDG, and that is going to push their gold lead ever so slightly in, in their favor. 
Yeah, Top Esports were really trying to bank on finding some sort of pick around mid, which is why they were just outright ignoring that side. EDG, though, did pay the respect necessary. And, I mean, heck, we're getting to a point where Dragon's up in one minute, Reset's coming out exactly, you know, a minute before for EDG, so now that they're back on the map, they can start getting this vision control down. Shaosheng will be able to push in this bottom lane. And, okay. you know how much? I know you. You're, you're, you're getting antsy. You're waiting for the fight, but TS definitely going to need to fight this one. I wonder if Mark's going to try and opt into looking for a flank this time around rather than just going outright at the side of EDG, but EDG have gotten so much vision down so far. They know Mark's position. Shashank TP's in early here to make sure that he's with the team. This is a team fight Fiora. Not usually ideal. There's a great bubble comes out from Scout. Jack is actually cleansing super late on that one! <laughs> Viper! Viper is here! Kiss the ring, Top Esports! And now the rest of the follow-up make up with a double play. It's too beautiful. Shaoshang chasing them down one by one. Gets himself a double as Top Esports are just destroyed. Where is immune though? And Scout underneath the tower right now gets away on the Dark Passage. Oh, when she goes down, Way would finish that one with the turret shot. But it'll be a bot lane in him. Tower taken. Baron is up. Dragon is up. EDG, they've got a smorgasbord of options. Much, I just want to know how is that allowed? That was so dirty. <laughs> they just were all gone. Viper destroyed all of them. TS funneling into that tri brush and bot, which was pretty confusing overall from the fact that, you know, they'd push in mid, their bot was being pushed in, but wow, TS trying to force some tough options. I don't think they go for this. Do they go for this? I mean, it is top esports and their backs are against the wall. Name a more iconic duo than them doing Baron at this point in the game. They're going to start this one off five, but moving over. But Mako and JJ are here as well. Oh, looking for a pick here. Baron will reset. Top esports realized that this is not doable. My god, I just can't get over what we saw. They were all I gone. Mean, they were all exploded in an instant. If you needed an argument for a collector, that's it. That's the one point in the game. Like, LDR is going to be better for the rest of the game now. Ooh, we wait. We have 3-14. As here we go, Top Esports trying to just burst this Baron down. JJ over the wall, no blast cone there. Flashes into the pit. Can they kill JJ before the Baron is low enough? Oh, it's Jackie oh, to get the Baron now. JJ low on HP. Xiaoshan trying to escape. One Nothing kill for Top Esports. No way do they actually pull this back against Soul, no less. Shadow Surge in onto Viper as well. The resets come on through for every single player on Top Esports. Four kills strong. And now their map is, is, is going. <laughs> Man, this is just too crazy. TS, they find it. They have the Baron. You got you got some like 30, 40 second death timers coming out. This is at least going to be an inhib. Knowing top eastwards, they're probably just going to look for the game ending push. No way the EDG lose. Not after that soul fight. Not after the that old Viper. <laughs> Top Esports, Mojo is the name of the game. And Top Esports say, sod your ring, sod your world championship. We're going for the base. One tower down, looking for the second one. Trying to end the game before the resets come through, before the respawns come through. Top Esports oh has done it. <laughs> that was probably the best series of the year, hands down. My goodness, that ending. The fact again, they were so bold, they were so decisive. They commit to the Baron, they back off. They know EDG probably want to commit to some resets because they just got a bunch of kills. They wait a couple of seconds and they instantly turn back towards the Baron. My goodness, this top esports team, the magic munch, the mojo, it's back. Oh, yeah, they are.